Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the Dean Show. I'm with Hakeem Archuleta. He went from surfing to doing all sorts of incredible things. He's into the prophetic tradition of medicine. And guess where he's at? Right next to me. Now, you used to surf? I did surf, yeah. It was actually in the 40s and the 50s that I was surfing. Yeah. What That's when they had long boards. <laughs> long boards. They had different boards than they have now, uh, back in those days. Mia, actually, as a uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu practitioner, yeah. many people, many people, they end up uh, really uh, surfing for the balance and uh, many other, they derive yeah. good benefits absolutely, for it in the martial absolutely. arts. Yeah. And, 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 and I, I think, yeah, I've, I've always said and I believe very much that it's a very valuable practice. Uh, it teaches you not only these things of balance and coordination, but uh, and sensory awareness of what's happening, but teach you how to ride the waves, and uh, you know everything in nature and everything in life. We could say if we look at it one way, there's a wave. You know, inclinations and 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 ideas and attitudes come, and things happen in waves. They they start somewhere and then they grow into a bigger thing, and then they another wave comes. And so in surfing, you learn you learn to read the waves. So one of the things the surfers say if they're together, they'll say outside, meaning. Don't take this wave. There's one outside that's even better. Hang on. And then you make an effort. You paddle. It's like shaking the tree. You paddle just enough to get to the right place in the wave. And then you can stand up and you let the wave carry you. Oh. So that's a deep wisdom that we can apply to many, many things in life, including healing. Can you share with us that time in your life when you were seeking to know the purpose of life? You believed in the Creator and then you asked him to guide you. Something very simple, yet profound. And then you actually, from there, you met, you actually met a Muslim and who told you about Islam. Can you share with us this experience you had? When I heard what Islam was, I realized that I'd been praying to God and saying to God, you know, please, God, show me what I'm looking for. That's, you know, thank, I'm thankful to you and forgive me for wanting more, but I want more and something and know what it is. And so when someone, simply explained to me what Islam was, the five pillars and so forth, it was pretty clear to me that's what I had been praying for. This is unique. I mean, so you didn't, you were, you were, you believed in a creator, yes. a higher power, yes. God Almighty, that's right. and you didn't go through any intermediary, you just prayed to God. How, I, I just, I, I would pray. It's, I was a musician at the time and I actually would sing my prayers. So it's, you know, you know, oh God, you know, here I am, you know, whatever. I just make up whatever and spontaneously play music with this. But I would, would ask God for whatever I wanted. And at that time, like I say, I was asking forgiveness for wanting more, but wanting more. And then I prayed that. I was doing the same prayer for maybe five days, weeks, something like that. And then I went to, uh, to Berkeley and met a man who was a Muslim. And uh, he said, this is what Islam was. And I immediately saw his dawah, you could say, took about 20 minutes, half hour with me. Wow. It's amazing. Tell because them. I was looking for it. And I think this is something to realize with people. There are many, many people out there that are looking for something like Islam. But we have to allow it to be something for them other than just another world religion, something that's put them off. You know, a lot of people are put off by world religions. They become atheists or they become atheists. They just don't practice anything. And uh, so, but it's, it's helpful to, to realize that inside everyone is this longing and this desire to find something that's fulfilling in terms of, uh, we could say, in terms of a belief system, you know, an iman, uh, you know, some kind of, everybody, you know, Quran says everybody worships something, look to what it is you worship. And it helps to recognize that people uh, do want that from inside, you know, and you, you know, the wisdom by which you allow them to discover it is kind of key. And you know my 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 sheikh, my teacher in Morocco, he said, don't don't talk to people about Islam, don't argue for Islam and talk about it. Just feed them and welcome them as guests. And I've seen that. I, when uh, you know after nine one around nine one nine eleven before nine eleven, I had I came back from uh, Morocco and other travels in the world, and I I took up this practice for myself personally of feeding people, and uh, I would have a big meal for maybe 25, 35 people, my kids were, you know, at an age when they'd invite their friends that weren't Muslims to have these meals and we'd cook really good food for them and feed them. And I would explain to people, I'd say, you know, you're, I'm doing this, feeding you and we're coming together just because as human beings, we want this and it's natural for us to just be together with each other, eat together, 
be appreciative and thankful for it. But we wouldn't talk about Islam. They knew we were Muslims, my family, and we'd go off and pray when, you know, but uh, there was no overt, you know, discussion about Islam. But when 911 happened, following 911, I started getting phone calls from people, from people who would come to those dinners. And they'd say to me, Hakeem, you know, I want to come to dinner on Sunday, but could I come a little earlier because I'd like to talk to you about something, some things. Nine people became Muslim. Wow. And all we did is, all, we never talked about it. All we did was feed them, and all they did was observe all the way we were together. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, was, it was a very natural, organic kind of thing that took place. Do you see a, a big difference from when you were coming up in the university setting to today with this whole movement, the uh, new atheism, as they call it? Was there such a thing back then? Not as much, not as much there is now, though. There's, uh, but again, you know, it's like uh, one of the historians, famous historians said, this, this period of time is unique in human, in human history that we really, people have this idea that they can live without a religion, without some sort of body of teaching that they can call their religion and their, their, their way in which they worship God together. So it's a new thing and, uh, you know, it's, a, it, it, it's an example of the, of the kind of, uh, the, the way in which we're kind of bereft in the present world, the present time, and how we do without so much mm -hmm. uh, that we realize is essential to our nature. So, yeah, and, and you know, you know, I, I follow what Imam Ghazali said, which is, you know, the atheist somewhere inside knows and believes in God because they came from that spirit in which, in that, that common spirit in which God said to them, Allah said to them, am I not your Lord? And they answered affirmatively, yes, you are my Lord. And that enabled them to be embodied in this world. And based on that, when I, you know, I have, the, I have no arguments with the atheists. I have no discussion or evidence. I don't have nothing to prove. I simply like to say, look, believe me, whether you believe me or not, you believe in God, you know, whether you know it or not. You tell them head on. Huh? I tell them head on. Who are you Some, kidding? Sometimes they get really angry. <laughs> That's like know? saying, who are you kidding? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. Like, who are you kidding? You know, and you believe in God. Don't tell me. I know you've got a whole discussion. You know, I've heard it many times. I'm not interested. Yeah. Believe me. You believe in God, and I just leave it at that. And I, you know, last time I said that, the man his veins went out in his neck and his face got red. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I, you know, I don't see the point of getting into a discussion about it because, uh, you know, my discussion and my words, you know, are near, not nearly as strong as, as God's evidence. You know, someone said, if you don't, you know, not believing in God is like is like, you know, or prove, trying to prove the existence of God is like trying to prove the existence of the sun in the sky. You know, I mean, duh, it's yeah. <laughs> kind of obvious. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, it's a different t thing now, isn't there? There's a lot of this sort of, yeah, sort of, a uh, lot, lot of new stuff coming up, huh? A lot of new stuff. Yeah. A lot of kind of extremist uh, atheists, I guess, too. Yeah. They're proud, of, really proud. I'm an atheist and I'm proud Tr of it. And trying to convert us to atheism. No, they <laughs> We're going to. I remember, too, someone saying, well, you know, if you're an atheist, at least you, you have the beginning of the whole principle of Islam, which is la ilaha. There is no God. Except Allah, except yes. the absolute reality, which is not a God. And, and, and I used to, when I became a convert, I loved the, the, the principle that I was not coming, becoming a part of a world religion. I was coming, becoming a part and joining something that was much more essential and true on a very basic, you know, basic, uh, real level. That it's, it's the path for us as human beings, mm -hmm. quite simply, nothing more. Yeah. So... Not, a, not an organization with all their sort of details and, you know, that takes place too in Islam, but it was part of the, something that comes naturally forth from it as part of our fitr, our first nature. Mm -hmm. We're going to go ahead and take a break and we'll be right back with more. i got some more questions to ask our special guests here. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Subscribe right now. Assalamu alaikum, welcome back to the Dean Show. Now, when you did accept Islam, and I usually, you know, like to explain to, you know, not yet Muslims out there, the people, our brothers and sisters in humanity, because, you know, when you think Islam, you think something foreign, something error, uh, something from Arabia, but Islam was something that Jesus did, Moses did, Abraham did, they all submitted their will to the Creator, you know, alone, pure uh, monotheism. Yes. And did you get a lot of backlash now from your family, friends, when you did accept Islam? Uh, friends at that time, yes, I was in Berkeley, a lot of friends. Did they, was, there, was there a ransom on your head? No, a lot of my friends thought, just thought I'd lost it, gone crazy. People at that time in Berkeley, this was 60s in Berkeley, 
so they were examining all kinds of things yoga and Buddhism and Eastern religions etc 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 and in that in, the, in that setup of which we were investigating all sorts of things Islam came up but Islam kind of you know like I say when I met the Muslim explained what it was it was uh, you know it kind of stuck with few of us and a lot of my friends that at that time when when I became Muslim there were two of uh, other friends of mine in Berkeley that made became Muslims at the same time and they all kind of thought we were crazy they were artists and you know poets and things like that and but the interesting thing is that a lot of those people eventually through the years there were six more people from our kind of community of friends that ended up becoming Muslims eventually through the years so it was kind of interesting it just took them a little longer to get to that yeah but we were looking at all sorts of things at that time in Berkeley all sorts of options and possibilities because basically a lot of what happened at that time in the 60s was a really healthy dissatisfaction with the status quo like I say this the spiritual wastelands of Southern California the 40s and 50s uh, lifestyle that was very very uh, oppressive and closed and uh, not very uh, not much life in it so, um, you know, we were looking at all these things at that time. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and for a lot of people, Islam, you know, a lot of people became Muslim eventually, you know, in time. You know, just comparing it. I remember going to, being part of some, uh, some radio programs or I think radio or TV in which, you know, that we'd discuss, that we'd have on the, t on the panel, we'd have, uh, we'd have Muslim, myself representing Islam and a Christian and a Jew and a Buddhist and a New Age person and we would discuss, I remember one program we were discussing angels and the, it was a full, you know, a long half hour, 45 minute program, something like that and they all had the things to say about angels and then I realized that at some point they had not much more to say and I realized as a Muslim I had a lot more to say. They could go on and on and on about it and that's one of the things that I found really remarkable when I did become Muslim is the the vast knowledge of wisdom, the kind of sea of knowledge and kind of just information at least, but the knowledge that backed up uh, everything in Islam was enormous. Yeah. Tell us, uh, you shared yesterday uh, a story that uh, you had, you know, because I think this is very important for anyone out there to do, you know, in a state of confusion that many people are in. You know, they might have the biggest houses, the biggest cars, they got money, suicides on the rise, even amongst teens, you know, trauma. Yeah. And we've been affected by it. But something just as simple as what you did, you asked, you know, God alone. Yeah. You know, you didn't you didn't go through anyone out there. And you mentioned that you passed this along to a lady shortly while after you saw her in hijab. Yeah, sure well, that, yeah, I could tell that story. I mean, actually, she was a patient of mine. And she had come to me with emotional problems and some physical problems. And we did some work for a period of time. And she overcame her physical problems and, and emotional problems. She was a lot better. And then one day she came to me after she'd been well for a while. She came back. She said, you know, I've come to this place in my life. And I, I considered it a continuation of her being well and getting healthy again. And she said, I feel the need for worship in my life. And I could have said to her, as a Muslim, I should have said, I could have said, well, you should look at Islam, you know, because that's what I do. And so, you know, but I felt at some level that wasn't quite ethical. I was, I was in a little confusion, not certain where I should say that or not. But I decided not to say it. And rather, I said, well, you know, you could do something that I know that some people do, which is, you know, get up before dawn and find a place where you can sit in reflection and, and, and just be with yourself and be with, you know, whatever, be, ask reality reality that you find yourself in in this this period of time in life itself ask that reality to show you signs or guidance of some kind so it comes to you see what comes from deep within you what comes to you in, in your world and I and she said well I'll try that thanks for the advice and I left her and then two or three months later I ran into her on the street she was wearing a job mm -hmm. and she said yeah I did what you said thank you so much because I did that and I asked reality uh, what I should do for guidance and worship and she said, everywhere I turned that day, the message, Islam, 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 Islam was there. So she mm -hmm. became Muslim. That's the beautiful thing, because the creator of the heavens and earth, that's the ultimate reality. The one who created it's everything. And when you, ask another name him, God. when you ask God Almighty alone for guidance, he will facilitate a way. Yeah. But it's surprising. You don't uh, see many people doing that basic step. Yeah. Seeking out the purpose of life, why we're here, why we've been created. And some people do, and some people don't. Yeah. Uh, some people are, but again, like I said, I, it's it's valuable to know that somewhere inside people are seeking that. You know, I mean, people also give up on it, unfortunately. Yeah. And they just shut down and, and, and 
and turn it all off and they stop that sinking. But uh, even those people sometimes inside, there's that spark, you know, because yeah. they've come, you know, the Quran says we all come from Allah and return to Allah. Yes. And, and what happens in this life is, you know, this is the zone of action. This is the time we have a chance to, to declare that we're Muslim or to do good actions, bad actions. All these things of action take, take place. And in the next life, the meanings of these actions will become manifest. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, deep inside, even and, and the true nature, our true nature of people, this is something that's valuable in film and does counseling. I do a lot of counseling, so-called psychological work, depression and anxiety and things like that. And for these people, it's valuable to know that inside them, or, or, or lack of confidence in the world, and they're beaten down by society and, you know, poor people and, and, and socially kind of uh, uh, disenfranchised and so forth. And it's helpful for those people to, 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 to connect with their true nature to you know, and, and, and recognize that inside these people, I mean, even, I've worked, seen people come out of prisons just the most, outwardly the most uh, difficult kind of people. And they can access, if they can access this true nature inside, there is compassion, the inclination for compassion in there, for love and goodness. So that's something to keep in mind with the, with the most difficult people sometimes, even the most annoying people that you expect the best from them. It's likely to, to, or likely to come forth, inshallah. Well, you're hearing, hear, hearing it here on the Dean Show. We'll be right back with more. Don't give up. That's the minute. Don't give up. Spark what's already inside of you. We want to bring it out. We'll be right back with more here on the Dean Show. Don't go anywhere. Subscribe right now. Back here on the Dean Show for my special guest. And what advice now before we conclude? Um, would you would you give from your experience? You also now deal with the prophetic uh, medicine, helping people with their health, with their nutrition. We see that it's a s astonishing, you know, statistics. One is that 50% of people living today will have cancer. One in uh, four will die from it. 95% uh, of chronic diseases are by the food choices that people are m making. You know, obesity is on the rise. Mm -hmm. Epidemic and kids are not expected to outlive their. Uh, their parents. This is a, a matter that needs to be taken yeah. serious. You know, you, you've been uh, around. You, you've been dealing with these things. Give us some some uh, some tips. Well, well, the most important thing I would suggest is that whatever is going on in one's life, whether it's emotional difficulties, physical difficulties, whatever it might be that seems to be obstacles, yet, like you said, don't give up. You know, I mean, it's uh, the, the the possibilities are enormous for healing what we experience and what we've experienced and the difficulties that we've come, uh, that we find ourselves with, is not a sentence. You know, by Allah's generosity, uh, you know, I've seen, for example, I've, I've worked with cancer people for a long time. There's no known cancer that was not sort of, a person overcame. We could say healed, Some, a lot of people say, well, remission, whatever. You know, there's no, there's no cancer known that people did not have victory over. And this is true for all sorts of illnesses, and in terms of emotional things and depression and so-called. I mean, one of the things that just bothers me so is this thing when someone is diagnosed as being schizophrenic, they're told by psychiatrists, well, this is something you'll have for your life, all of your life, and you don't have to take medication. And that's just not true. You know, statistically, if you look at the National Institute of Mental Health, the World Health Organization, and you look at the statistics, you know, two-thirds of those people recover. Two thirds of people come back to a normal functioning life, and this is so. This is just the same thing is true for all the obstacles and difficulties. The more obstacles, in fact, the truth of the matter is this: deep wisdom here in this, and listen carefully, anyone listening, that all the difficulties we have are gifts for us when we can recognize them, when we can understand them, when we can make use of them and assimilate them and transmute them from difficulties and obstacles into resources of, for wisdom and compassion in ourselves. We're designed to do that by Allah's design in us. And that's what real healing is about. That's what real spiritual progress, the spiritual path is about. Taking all the difficult, all the slings and arrows of life and turning those around and using those, those things as resources so that we can be more compassionate for others who have similar problems and the difficulties they're going through are similar to our own. And, and, and really nothing more valuable for us in terms of healing, in terms of being in this world, than serving other people and helping them out of their difficulties. By Allah, uh, you know, says in, in, in Quran, he indicates these kind of things. 
Sheikh, sure, thank you for spending time with us. You're welcome. We started with uh, peace, a very, very powerful uh, greeting that we greet with, and people are searching for it, and they turn into the Dean Show, and they're listening to us. Okay. Hopefully they can find it like, you know, uh, we're saying it. And don't give up. We'll see you next time. Tune in every week to the Dean Show. Subscribe if you haven't already. Until next time, Assalamu alaikum. Peace.